Hey guys, it's Adam here, your Northern Tech, coming to you on the Vlog and Life channel. That's right, people, we're moving all the videos over here. So anyway, enough talking about that. Today what I want to do is an unboxing and a quick little tour of my new phone, because my old phone is a piece of shit. And the new phone I got is the Asus Zenfone 2. This is the bigger version of the phone, so let's roll that intro and get on with an unboxing, and we'll take it from there. Alrighty guys, so basically on the box, it, uh, it's actually a pretty nice box. Like they got the phone on the front, over here they got a bunch of tech specs. It does have an Intel processor in it, we'll get into that later. Uh, has your pull tab telling you how to open it. And over here it's got this like weird shit telling you what it has, which is really hard to see on the camera, but that's fine. Uh, this phone has, uh, okay, we are looking at 4G LTE, has wireless capabilities, HD camera, Bluetooth 4.0. Anyway, the, the stickers on the side don't really tell much. Um, it's got a 2.3 gigahertz Intel processor though, so that's kind of cool. My first Intel processor phone. And I think I just broke the tab. Lovely. So anyway, as soon as you open it up, there's the phone right there, right in front of your face. You are greeted by this dirty, really, really, really massive phone. Look at that. Well, we'll get into this in a bit. Also in here you get manual, your instructions, which in search of incredible, the warranty, get some sticker nonsense, another uh, user guide, user guide in French, warranty guide in French, one of these charging plugs for USB, and a micro USB cable. Wait a second. Okay, yes, it is micro USB. So that's perfect. And that's all that's in the box. There's nothing else in here. Yeah, there's nothing else in here. So the box is empty. So all in all, like the presentation's pretty good, but like you think this is like you're looking at this phone and you're probably thinking, well, that doesn't look too big. This is a 5.5 uh, inch screen and it's an IPS display in a 5 inch body. 64 bit super quad core inside. So it's got the Intel 64 bit super quad core. I don't understand why it's a super quad core, not a quad core. And it is running Android Lollipop 5.0. Literally this phone out of the box, you don't have to sign up with a contract or nothing, you just buy the phone at Staples or anywhere else and you use it. So we'll take that shit off. Oh my goodness, this thing's massive! Let me grab the S4 and I'll do a quick comparison for you. Let me clean off this desk because this is disgusting. Here we have the S4, here we have the Zenfone 2. Right away, you can tell the screen is way bigger. The phone's wider. Just a nicer phone altogether. But it's a little bit different than the Samsung. The Samsung like to utilize a lot of rockers on the side and buttons on the side and shit, right? Well, the Zenfone, the first thing I'm noticing when I'm looking around it is your charging ports on the bottom with your mic, but there's no rockers on this side. There's one button on the top, which is the power button, and your headphone jack. There's no rockers on this side, and your charging port. You want to know where the volume control rocker is? Right there. That's how you set your volume. There's your camera, there's your flash, and your front facing camera. I'm not sure the exact specs of the camera yet. This is just a quick unboxing and a look around. Let's see if the phone fires up, or if we gotta charge it. So we'll press and hold the power button. Sweet Jesus, it's just chimed at me. In search of incredible Asus, powered by Android. I should flip that around so you guys can see it. So this has that 2.3 gigahertz Intel processor, 4 gigs of RAM, and 64 gigabytes of storage. Oh, but wait, there's more. You can also put a friggin' SD card in this thing, like a micro SD card for more space. So that, my friends, was the selling thing, a selling feature for this phone. That, and I can get it without having to need a contract. Fucking mint. But anyway, people, I'm going to go ahead and set this phone up, and I'll show you more once she's good to go. Alrighty guys, welcome back. So I let the phone do an update. Now we're going to go ahead and swap out the SIM cards. You can see fingerprints all over both phones because they're brutal without a face cover on them. But I've already gone ahead and removed the back panel. Uh, pain in the ass by the way, but uh, once you get it, it's not too bad. And here in the back, you can see there's no removable battery. This thing has got a built-in lithium polymer uh, battery for, uh, for its charging capabilities. It's a 3000 milliamp battery. And as you notice on the back faceplate, there's a little circuit there with a tabby tab. Now some people are stupid and think that's what the government uses to track your cell phone. Those people are too paranoid to fucking function. What that is, that's wireless charging people. You can buy one of those QI pads 
sit this thing down and it'll charge just sitting there. That is badass. And those tabs there connect to these two silver points right here. So perfect, you know. And there's your two SIM card slots. Number one is the one I'm going to use. Number two is for a 2G connection. Number one is for a 3G, 4G LTE connection. And right here, you have your expandable slot for a micro SD card, which is awesome. I'm gonna go ahead and we're just going to sit this down on the table like so. I'm gonna break into my Samsung Galaxy S4 and actually just wanna to check to see if there's any, uh, check to see if I have anything important on here to deal with. No, I do not. So we're gonna go ahead and peel this off Peel the back panel of the S4 apart and extract the battery to kill power and extract the SIM card because we no longer need it in here. And then from here, we take the SIM card, line it up, and push it on in, like so. Once that's all said and done, we take the old Samsung Galaxy phone, button it back up. I don't have a SIM card in there or a uh, memory card, no, okay. So we'll button that back up, and that'll go into the drawer of useless phones to be traded in at, at Telus someday when they actually get handsets that don't completely suck a fat hard one. I'm not going to put a memory card in this because it does have 64 gigs of storage, but literally they close the plate back up. It's just a pressure, pressure fit. So, and that's all she wrote, people. Done, done like dinner. Uh, I had to do a system update, and I installed all my apps, so let's fire this thing up, and we'll see if the phone actually detects that there's a SIM card in it. Okay, let me just back that out a bit. I have the screen dimmed a bit. Look, you can see my reflection in the fucking window of the uh, phone. That's pretty cool. But um, we'll just see if it actually shows up as a SIM card and it registers it and everything's hunky-dory. Or if I have to use that SIM card they gave me for free. Here's hoping that everything's hunky-dory and we don't have to use that other SIM card. Because I'd like to get away from doing that. One thing I noticed about the phone right away is the Samsung actually... Okay, so it's seeing the SIM card. It says no service. Swipe to unlock. Uh, okay, so it is seeing the SIM card now. I'm just going to crank the brightness on the screen. It'll make it easier for the camera to see it. I had it tuned down halfway, but if you crank it all the way up, like... That's a pretty bright display. A lot of people online were complaining saying that this display is not bright enough. That's fucking brighter than shit. I don't care what anybody says. But uh, if I go to messaging here, and if I go to, I'm just gonna send Rex a message just to see if it works. All right, I can't show you this because with Android it actually shows you the message, but I just sent him a message to see if it works. Now, the buttons on this phone, like this is a pretty cheap phone, but it's pretty awesome nonetheless. Uh, huge screen, 5.5 inch screen, uh, all that jazz. You got the button down here where if you tap this button here, it basically shows you, oh, and the text message just came through. Yep, and it just came through. So that's perfect. Perfect, perfect, perfect. Now, um, this is what I find weird about it. Okay, you want to make a phone call, you click on the phone call button, whatever. Um, these are not hardware buttons. There is no hardware buttons except for the power button on the top, like I showed you before. Uh, so... Right now, okay, this is kind of cool. The phone's turned off, right? Normally, you would reach for that power button at the top, but if you just turns it on, swipe up. You want to turn it off? Tap, tap. Tap, tap. If my Samsung had that, I would have ripped the power button out and said, fuck it, you know? Pretty decent. Now, I don't really know much about the hardware. The, the camera, I believe, is a 12 megapixel out back and a 5 megapixel out front. Pretty basic, pretty standard. Uh, you got your email and all the basic apps on the front here. If you click down here, it actually categorizes everything. So depending on what it is, like social and whatnot. But I haven't really got a chance to use the phone. It's been updating for the past three hours. So I'm gonna play with this a little bit and figure out exactly what's going on and go from there. And I'll give you guys a more in-depth review probably later on. I just thought I'd show you an unboxing of my new phone and compare it to the S4 in size. As you can see, this thing is like a fucking battleship compared to the S4, you know. Here, we'll grab the S4 and do another side by each comparison. Like, compared to the S4, this thing is a fucking Goliath. You know, it's got at least a good inch of, uh, of, weight, of, of, of distance on it. The screen itself, if I line up the screen, so the screen for the Samsung starts here and ends here, where the screen for the Zen phone starts at the same spot but ends, like, way the fuck down here. So... Just that alone, like this is a 5 inch display, this is a 5.5 inch, 
And the whole reason why I did this rather than going to TELUS and saying, you know what, let's renew my contract and we'll get a brand new phone like the Note 5 or the Galaxy S6 or the S6 Edge is for the main reason that the S6 Edge and the S6, uh, like the S6 Edge 64 gig or the Note 64 gig were both 350 bucks on a two year contract. Right there, that's more than the price I paid for the Zen phone. Also, your contract that you sign up for has to be a $70 a month plan or more. So right now, my plan is a student 55 plan from fucking 2000 and some odd back in the days before, like, it's from a long time ago, like 2004, 2005. And it's a student plan because I was able to get it because my student number at my at the college I went to actually worked. And I was able to get the student plan. If I were to get that new phone, I'd have to give up my old plan. And that would suck because that means I'm going to be paying like $100 a month for a cell phone bill over the $77 or $78.45 I pay right now a month after taxes. This just made more sense. The phone works. I can text on it. I just got a message back from Rex. I know it works. Uh, you can surf the internet on it. I can install Chrome on it. Just everything I did with my Samsung Galaxy S4, I can do on this. It's got a little bit better of a camera on both the front and rear. I noticed it doesn't jitter like it did on here. As it did, like on here, the phone, the front facing camera, sorry, doesn't jitter in low light. It actually has a low light mode, which is kind of neat. But I'll explore all these and I'll get back to you later on on a better, more in depth review, or you'll probably hear me talking about it in the vlogs. All in all, I'm anxious to get started with this phone, and uh, that's what I'm gonna do. So, thanks for watching this unboxing and like quick little hands on review. There's another message from Rex. So, we know the phone's working, everything's hunky dory, it detects that it's on a Telus carrier. Love it. So thanks for watching my review of the Zen phone. I know it wasn't really in depth, but uh, basically I'm doing a first impressions unboxing. I don't really know much about the phone. I haven't uh, read through the uh, the the uh, the Gida da in Claudio fucking whatever that last word is. So got to do some reading up on it, play with it a bit, and figure it out, and I'll give you guys more updates later on, but so far I'm really happy with it, it has an, like I said, the screen's fucking fantastic on it, anybody bitching saying that it's not bright enough, obviously you need to get your eyes checked, because it's the cat's meow, for 300 bucks, fuck, I don't have to, I don't have to sign up for another contract and be at the mercy of a company for two more years, they fuck me around, I can just say, you know what, eat a bag of dicks, I'm moving somewhere else and carry my phone and everything with me because that's what you can do. Hey people, thanks for watching. Like, favorite, and comment. Any questions about the phone, go ahead and ask them and maybe I'll include them in the, uh, I guess we'll go for a week and then I'll give you guys another video on my complete impressions of this phone, if it's a good buy or not. So far I'm saying it's a good buy, but I haven't really had a good chance to play with it, right? So give me a chance to fuck with it for a bit. I'll get you guys back in a week. If you have any questions, leave them on the video. I'll probably address those in that video. So until then, guys, peace to freak out.